What's going on everybody? It's your boy Sharpie360 here and we're bringing you today the first ever PC build of the channel and so let's get into it. We're going to walk through the parts list at this point and then we'll get into the actual build. So to start off this build, what we're running everything through as far as the motherboard is going to be the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Ultra gaming motherboard. Pretty beast of a motherboard, top of the line for the, uh, well not top of the line, but a uh, very good choice for the Ryzen 3 se 3000 series. Speaking of which, the next one we got is going to be the processor Ryzen 7 Series 3800X running at 3.9 gigahertz for the clock and it is an 8 core processor with 16 threads. And to top it off, what we're going to have here now is going to be the graphics card. It's none other than the infamous Power Color Red Devil AMD Radeon RX 5700 XT. And this bad boy runs at about a base clock of uh, 2010 megahertz. So pretty badass graphics card. So with that being said, let's get into the build. All right, so we got our supplies box here. As we said in the parts list, we got the Gigabyte motherboard. We got some Crucial Ballistics RAM that we're using and the 750 watt power supply by PowerSpec. CPU is going to be the AMD Ryzen 3800X series. And we got the uh, AMD Wraith intercooler on top of that. Heat sink comes pre-applied as you can see. All right, next we're gonna unbox the Red Devil 5700 XT by PowerColor. This card is the top of the line for the price tier. It's running uh, eight gigabytes of DDDR6. A tri-fan setup. And the core clock for this guy is gonna be sitting at about 2010 megahertz. Nice looking card. I said it's uh, one of the top of the line cards for the price point for AMD at this point right now. All right, so this is the tower we're building in. Like I said, it's the Thermal Take View 71 RGB ATX full tower. It's got three 140 millimeter fans built in, one in the back and two in the front. Fully tempered glass design. It's a big case. I like it a lot. All right, so next what we did was we're prepping the motherboard to be installed into the case. We're gonna set up the processor, the RAM, and the M.2 drive and go from there. So what we got here is the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Ultra, which is a pretty good board for overclocking if you wanna get into that. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start by seating the processor into the socket. And again, we are using the AMD Ryzen 7 series 3800X. So with processor sockets, you got to make sure that you find the locating pin. It'll be on one corner. It'll usually be uh, deferred as a square versus the triangles. And what you want to do is find that seating location on the socket as well. We want to make sure we put the socket in the right way. Otherwise, we'll damage pins and it won't work right. So you can see there is a little square as compared to little triangles everywhere else. So okay, very important to make sure you seat the socket right to begin with. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. Lift up on the little tab as such, gently set the socket into place. And lock it down. So now we have our processor seated and now we're gonna move on to the next step. We're gonna put the cooler on top of it, which we have the AMD Wraith Prism Cooler. So this fits ATX style boards with the type of locking clamps that it has on both sides. So we wanna make sure that we get the non-locking side in first and then we can attach the locking side as shown here next and then hit the locking mechanism. So we strap down the cooler to securely to the processor. And this fan, of course, is obviously going to be powered by the CPU fan slot on the PVC of the motherboard. All right, just for good measure, we're going to go ahead and uh, show the locking pins on the board one more time. And then we're going to go ahead and get this seated on top of the processor. So let's do that. Once 
we have it on top and both pins are connected into the locking pins. Slide the tab forward and lock it into place. Now we're good to go. Last step is to just make sure we power the CPU fan and plug it into the PCB board. Cool, now that we have our CPU installed, let's move on to the next task. We're gonna install our crucial ballistics memory chips. So they are two by 16 gigabytes, so 32 gigabytes total, and we're gonna slot them in there. And just make sure we uh, look at the diagram of how they should be slotted in on this one. You can see that uh, it says DDR4A1, A2, B1, B2. And what we're gonna look at is the first bracket here is gonna tell us where to slot our first two RAM chip so that the mobile can utilize them properly. So we're gonna put it in the second slot and the fourth slot. All right, you wanna make sure you have the locating pin lined up, obviously, and just uh, seat them in with a nice firm push, two thumbs on one on both sides, and just give it a good snap in. All right, so the next step we're gonna take is installing the M.2 drive, one terabyte solid state M.2 drive. It's gonna handle, basically gonna hold our operating system, boot partition, and the rest of our content is going to be stored on alter alternative drives. All right, so this one we're gonna install into the shorter of the M.2 drives on the motherboard. This one houses three, two full-size ones and two, or one shorter one. And you can see that we have two screws that we gotta look at. We have a top screw and a bottom screw here, and we gotta use both of them. So we gotta use uh, pliers to uh, kinda unscrew the top screw from the bottom screw see here all right once we have those two screws we need to actually attach them back together so we need to use the uh, thicker thread on the bottom half of the screw to screw into the standoff on the motherboard once we slide the m.2 drive into the rack sometimes it tips up a little bit you got to just kind of push it down put some pressure on it and give it a little bit of a screw and tighten it down nice and snug now that we have the motherboard prepped and assembled, we can begin to start the process of seating it into the case. All right, so before we install the motherboard, we have to make sure that the power supply is in there. We're using the PowerSpec 750 watt AD plus gold rating, and we're just gonna make sure we attach it with the four screws to the back of the case as so, so two, three, and four. Slide it in ever so gently, and then we'll be good to go. And with every PSU, you have to do a little bit of finagling to get the alignment set up, and once so, we get the uh, fuse screws set up. One, two, three, and four. And then tightening down the screws, one, two, three, and four, going in a cross pattern to make sure the PSU is secure to the case. So one thing we forgot to hook up when we were installing the Wraith cooler on top of the processor is the RGB controller. So this little tab right here, or you can use USB control on the other side right there. We're just gonna plug it in to the CPU RGB fan control right there on the bottom, four pin slot connector. And we have the uh, first pin locator identifier right there. And finally, we'll just seat the other end of the cord into the Wraith Prism Cooler so we get RGB control over the fan. Okay, so now the standoffs for the motherboard, there's gonna be nine of them. They're all three in the same places, vertically down from the board. So we're gonna very carefully seat the motherboard into the case. We're gonna try not to wreck anything. So we just wanna kinda of get the pins lined up with the ground points on the motherboard so we can get some screws started. And once we get some screws started, we can start to align it and screw it down much easier. So there's nine screws that are gonna go in here and go, let's do it. Get the first screw started, make sure you just tighten it down ever so slightly so it's loose still, so you can align it still. You don't wanna ever tighten it down right away, all the way. And we're gonna 
pop in a couple other screws now that we have it completely seated and aligned into the case. And we'll just make sure we attach this vertical PCI slot holder or shroud. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure we have our RGB fans plugged in. Remember we have one in the back and two up front. And so we're just gonna tie these in. We'll just plug them into the CPUs. But at this point, I didn't realize that I was making a mistake in doing this to get full control over the RGB. So we'll come back to this at a later point in the video. But if you didn't want control over RGB and you just wanted them running, you could totally go about it this way by plugging them into the SysFan slots on the actual PVC of the motherboard. So the next thing we're gonna look at is setting up the onboard IO for the case, which consists of the power switch, the reset switch, onboard LEDs, USB 3.0, USB 2.0, and USB audio or the HD audio interface or less. So we're going to shove those through into the other side of the case and wire them up to the bottom of the PVC of the motherboard as well. And the onboard I.O. for the case is going to all plug into that big multi-slot on the bottom right of the board, which we talked about earlier in the video. And if you look, you can kind of see it down in the bottom right hand corner here. So there's the USB 2 slots that we're going to plug into. We have two slots, but we only have one cord, so we're just going to plug into the first one there. And there we have it have our I.O. routed and the cable management in back looking nice. All right, next thing we're gonna do is plug in the power supply into the PSU and this is the 24 pin that'll, that'll power the motherboard and all the onboard circuitry to go along with it. And any RAM or PCI slots that we have going other than the graphics card, I guess. So we'll just do our little bit of weaselment cable management and make sure that it looks all nice and pretty. Next cord we're going to run from the PSU is going to power the processor itself and you can see that my dad obviously has no concept of cable management by this clip right here and I pull it out of his hand and I'm like no we're not doing this we're going through this little slot down here and it's going to look all nice and pretty so we're going to do that right now. Beat it up over through the top and we got to clip these two together because they are modular power supply cables so sometimes they come apart and give it a little snap inside there and we are connected. Excellent. Alright so this is where we goofed up before because we're going to be powering all three RGB fans inside of the case. Instead of individual system fan slots we're going to be powering it through this thermal take case controller and that's going to be powered by a singular system fan input which we'll be routing through the bottom instead of up here we're going to go down over to the bottom slot right there and this will give us full control over the rgb for all three fans versus not having any control over them all right so the final part of this build we're going to be installing the piece de resistance of this build and it's the AMD well power color red devil 5700 XT graphics card we're gonna have to remove that plate to get access to it because it's such a large card but it's well worth the power you can see that it takes 16 pins of power so that means we're gonna have to get two individual PSU GPU cables running from the power supply to plug into that to maximize the full potential of this beast of a graphics card the Red Devil is by far the top of the line price point associated AMD graphics card of the 5700 series as far as I'm concerned. And here we go. 
Red Devil. Make sure to secure it nice and snug because it is slightly heavy, so we want to make sure we don't have too much graphic card sag in it. Alright, so the final part of getting this graphics card installed is wiring it up to the PSU. Like I said, we're going to be using two 8-pin connectors to fully power this bad boy. So we're first running the uh, first set right now. Pretty simple stuff. We're going through the bottom port of the back of the case, coming up and back and around. Over to the power supply connectors for the graphics card. These cables have a jumper on it. I'm not too much of a fan of it. I'll probably be upgrading my cables to better cables at some point, but these are what came with the power supply. So now we're running the second set, same difference, going into the secondary slot of the PSU, going through the same holes in the case, coming back around in the same fashion, and slotting it to the secondary 8 pin slot of the graphics card, just like that. Make sure we tighten up and uh, neaten up our cable supply, and there we go. Alright, so this is going to be the first power up of this bad boy beast of a machine power supply and everything is connected and boom! It is quite the bitchin' PC build as far as components are concerned, in my opinion, or whatever, of course, because I built it, but you know what? It turned out pretty damn well. So a couple of things before we get going is this build isn't 100% complete. I got another M.2 drive that I'm going to be dropping in that contains all my games for Steam and my render folders for video. We got a couple of mechanical drives that will drop the slots there and running into the SATA ports of the motherboard, but that's all boring stuff, not super crucial to build. Anyways, this has been my first PC build from scratch. I hope you enjoyed the video. I really appreciate checking it out. Give me some feedback. Let me know what you think of the cable management. Looks decent. And this is your boy, Sharpie360, Killer Zinc, and we're signing out. We'll catch you on the flip side. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more Sharpie360 and Killer Zinc content.